In this PowerPoint, we'll continue our discussion of chemical quantities and composition by looking at how to use the concept of the mole to convert between numbers of atoms and the corresponding mass of that element in grams. We previously learned that the mole is a counting unit, equivalent to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of any element. This number is known as Avogadro's number, and it's based on the average atomic mass of the elements in such a way that one mole is also equal to the periodic table mass of an element in units of grams, and this is known as the molar mass. So we can use these two equivalences to convert between the mass of any element that we can measure in the laboratory in units of grams and the number of moles of that element or the number of atoms. It's simply an application of dimensional analysis. So let's start with a conversion between grams and moles. Here's the sample problem. Beryllium is a light metal used to fabricate transparent x-ray windows for medical imaging devices. How many moles of beryllium are in a thin foil window weighing 3.24 grams? So just like any dimensional analysis problem, we'll begin with what we're given as a starting point in the problem. So we're told that we have a foil window that is 3.24 grams of beryllium. That's our starting point. We also need to know what our final unit should be. And the question asks how many moles of beryllium are in that window. So that's what we're trying to find. Now, in order to do this conversion, we just need an equivalence statement that relates moles of beryllium to grams of beryllium, a standard statement for that. And we have that in terms of the periodic table mass. That's our molar mass, where one mole of beryllium equals 9.012 grams of beryllium. And that 9.012 is simply the average atomic mass of beryllium on the periodic table. And now we can set up our dimensional analysis. We start with our given 3.24 grams of beryllium. And we're going to multiply this by our equivalent statement set up as a fraction, where the unit that we're given, grams, has to cancel out, which means that the gram portion, or half, of our equivalent statement is what we're going to put in the bottom half of the fraction, 9.012 grams of beryllium. That will cancel out my units. I'm trying to get moles, so we'll put the other half of that equivalent statement, one mole of beryllium, on top. And now we multiply through by everything that's on top, divide by everything that's on the bottom. So 3.24 times 1 divided by 9.012, and that gives us 0 0.35952 moles of beryllium. Okay, so remember sig figs at this point, the numbers in our conversion factors are considered exact numbers, so they don't influence the number of significant figures we round to in our final answer. The only measurement is the starting number. So we just have to look at our starting number to figure out the number of significant figures that we should round our final answer to. So 3.24 has three digits, and they are all considered significant because they're all non-zeros. And that means that we round our final answer to three significant figures. We start with the first non-zero on the left, so that means the three term right after the decimal, and count three places over. So 0 0.3595 will round up to 0 0.360 moles of beryllium. Let's look at another example. This time we're going to go in the opposite direction. We're asked for the mass of 2.561 moles of gold. So the moles are, are given our starting point, and we're trying to find mass. And you can usually assume anytime you're asked to find mass in chemistry that your unit's going to be grams. The equivalence that we know between moles and grams, again, comes from the periodic table, but notice that we've changed the mass number to 197.0 because this is the average atomic mass of gold this time, or the element that we're actually dealing with here. Again, we start 
our calculation with our given number in units and we set up our equivalence into our conversion factor. This time I start with units of moles, so the unit and number that go on the bottom come from the mole side of that equivalence statement. I'm going to divide by one mole of gold. And since I want to get grams, that has to go on the top of my conversion factor, so I multiply by 197. I plug that into my calculator, I get 504.517 grams of gold. Again, for rounding to an appropriate decimal place, I look at the starting number and its significant figures. I have four significant figures in that number, so I have to round my final answer to four significant figures. That means that I have to decide if 504.51 rounds up or down. And of course, it rounds down to 504.5 grams of gold. Now let's add in a conversion to atoms. Here's our next problem. A prospector panning for gold in a river collects 15 grams of pure gold. How many gold atoms are in this quantity? Our starting point will be our given amount of gold, 15 grams. And we're trying to find atoms of gold this time. So we still need to use the equivalence between moles and grams from the periodic table, but it doesn't take us quite far enough. We also will need to convert from moles to atoms by using the Avogadro's equivalence. One mole equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. The only time that we ever really need to use Avogadro's number is when we're converting into or out of atoms or molecules. So let's start this conversion the same way that we always do with the number that we're given. We want to cancel out our units of grams, so that means that we're going to first set up our conversion factor using the equivalence that contains grams. That's the first one. And the number that goes on the bottom has to cancel out grams. So we take the half that can actually contains grams of gold, 197. And the other half goes on the top, and we convert into moles. So our units of grams are going to cancel out. And in the first step, we'll be left with units of moles. Now in the second conversion factor, we want to actually convert into atoms and out of moles. So we have to cancel out our moles of gold from the previous step. So we take the mole from the Avogadro conversion and put that on the denominator. And since we want to get atoms, Avogadro's number has to go on the numerator. And now we multiply through by everything on top, divide by everything on the bottom, and we get 4.58528 times 10 to the 22nd as our number. We still need to round to an appropriate decimal place, but again, we go back to the original measurement, our 15 grams, count the number of significant figures. There's four significant figures here, and that means we have to round to four significant figures for our final answer. So 4.5852 rounds down to 4.585 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of gold. In summary, for elements, we can use dimensional analysis and our two equivalence factors that are based on the mole to convert between grams of that element, the number of moles it contains, and the number of atoms it contains. In the next PowerPoint, we'll look at how we can do similar conversions for compounds.